In this video, we'll be solving equations that have a quadratic form. They might not be quadratic equations themselves, but they have a pattern that fits the quadratic form, so we can use techniques like factoring to solve these equations. Here's our first example. It's this function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12. And we're going to find the zeros of this function, basically solving the equation when this expression, x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12, equals 0. It's definitely not quadratic because we have this exponent 4, but it does fit a quadratic pattern that we might be used to seeing. It does have three terms, and many of our quadratic expressions are trinomials. And if we look at the exponents, the pattern that we see is that the largest exponent is twice as big as the next one, and that our last term is a constant. And this fits in with the pattern that we would see quadratics have with its exponents, x squared. The middle term is a first degree x. We don't see the exponent, but we know that it is 1, and the last term is a constant. So our largest exponent is twice as large as the next one, and our third term is a constant. And that tells us that we have a form that can be solved using quadratic techniques. One strategy that is pretty useful is to do a substitution so that we are actually handling a quadratic expression for the rest of the way. If I think about the quadratic form, I usually do see something like x squared in the first term and regular x in the next term, but the key is that in the middle here I don't like to see a variable with an exponent. So I'm going to make a change. Now x is already used. It's how this expression started with an x variable, so I can't use another x. I should use a different letter. We'll use u. That's often used for these temporary substitutions that we do. So I need to decide what should u equal. I want my u to show up right here in place of the x squared, so my rule is going to be that u will equal x squared. Now from this rule, if I square both sides, this x squared to the second power would equal x to the fourth, and u squared. Now I have a, a rule based on my original rule that also shows x to the fourth can be swapped out with a u squared in its place. So this expression I can now rewrite as u squared minus 7u plus 12. So I made one rule about the relationship between x and u. I showed how this other rule follows from the first rule. And now I have a quadratic expression. I can factor this. We would look for the pair of numbers that multiply together equals 12. Added up will equal negative 7. So for factors, I'm finding u minus 3 and u minus 4. And when we solve, we get u equals 3 and u equals 4. But remember, our original function was a function of x. So the zeros of this function also need to be x values and not u values. So we need to substitute our x's back in. Our rule was that x squared equals u. So these two equations now become x squared equals 3 and x squared equals 4. Now we're not done yet because our zeros need to be x, not x squared. So let's do our last moves, which would be, in this case, it's a quadratic where we would square root both sides. So x squared equals 3. I square root both sides and get x equals a positive or negative radical 3. And from this equation, we get x equals positive 2 or negative 2. So we used factoring, which is a technique on quadratic equations. We were able to use it on this degree 4 polynomial because the exponents of the variable fit the quadratic pattern. And when that happens, our techniques of quadratics work on those equations and functions as well. Let's take a look at the graph and just make sure that we are seeing x-intercepts at these four locations now. There's our graph, x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12. And we have those intercepts at positive negative 2 and positive and negative radical 3. Here's our next example. And let's first verify that it is a quadratic form. We are looking for the exponents. And we're looking for our largest exponent to be twice as large as the next. And that looks good. 2 thirds is twice as large as 1 third. And we do have a constant for the third term. Next, let's think about the substitution. In place of this x to the third, this spot right here is where I would like to see a variable with no exponent. So how about u equals x to the 1 third? Now let's square both sides because 
We're still saying one should be a u, the next one should be a u squared. If I square both sides, I get u squared equals x to the 2 third, and that's a valid substitution for this term up here. That will give us 2u squared minus 9u plus 4 equals 0. Again, this is one we can factor. I'll do AC method. 2 times 4 is 8, and I'm looking for a pair of numbers that multiplied together would equal positive 8, added up would equal negative 9. This whole route and the factor by grouping will just go kind of quickly through it. There's the one factor 2u minus 1, that common factor, and then the u minus 4 making up the second factor. Let's solve. We get u equals 4 and u equals 1 half. The common mistake is to stop here, but remember we have to come up with solutions that are for x, not u. So let's do our back substitution and get the x's back in. Remember our rule was u equals x to the 1 third. So our equations are x to the 1 third equals 4 and x to the 1 third equals 1 half. How do we come up with the x by itself? How do we solve for x with these equations? Well, remember that this 1 third of an exponent does indicate cube root, or if I just know to the power of 3, and, and the rule is that I multiply my exponents, that would lead me to just x to the first power, or regular x. Basically, we want to do both sides to the power of 3. That gives us x equals 64, and on this side, x equals 1 eighth. So again, we started out with an equation that was not quadratic, but it did have that pattern, a substitution, so we can really look at an actual quadratic while we do our moves like factor and solve substitute back in at the end and understand what operation is needed to solve for x there. In this case it was both sides of the equation needed to the third power to solve for x. And let's, why not take a look at this graph also. We're looking for x intercepts at 64 and 1 8th. Well here's the graph. There's the intercept at 1 8th and it just kind of heads down this way. But if we zoom out it comes back up, and there's the other x-intercept at 64. That's a very neat-looking graph. The next example, x minus 5 radical x plus 6 equals 0. Does it have that quadratic form? Think about the exponents, but also think about what exponent is really behind a square root. Square root of x equals x to the 1 half. Just like in that previous example, our exponent of 1 third was a cube root. Exponent of 1 half is the square root. So thinking of this as x minus 5 x to the 1 half plus 6, we will have that pattern where our largest exponent in this case would be 1, which is twice as big as our next exponent of 1 half. So the, we're starting with the swap out here. In place of square root of x, we'll use a u. And if I square both sides, I do show that u squared equals x. Making those swaps, we have u squared minus 5u plus 6 equals 0. Let's factor u minus 2, u minus 3. Solve u equals 2 and u equals 3. And let's not forget, sub back in, u was a square root of x. So we have square root of x equals 2 and square root of x equals 3. We should square both sides now, and I should advise you at this time that whenever you use exponent of 2 on both sides of an equation to solve, that is a situation that causes you to always have to check your answer. It can lead to extraneous solutions. But I want you to know that when we square both sides, there's always extra work involved to check those answers. Right here, square root of 4 is 2, so 4 minus 10 plus 6, that's equal 0. 9 minus 15 plus 6 equals 0. We're good there. And let's look at the graph to spot those intercepts at 4 and 9. Very nice there at 4 and coming back up at 9. A little quick comment here. This equation does have a square root of x, so we do have a restriction that we aren't using any x values that are less than 0. And that's why we'll see our graph sort of st will basically stop right here when x equals 0 and our graph is not defined for any x values that are negative. Good thing to point out there also. Here's our last example, and you could say that this equation truly is quadratic. The highest exponent is 2, and even when we do all the multiply and simplify, we'd find our highest exponent is 2. And we could choose to go that route to solve this equation, 
but do we see a pattern here and start thinking about the substitution that might make this equation into a much more simple and convenient equation to use. How about, I see this quantity 3x plus 1. Could I swap a 3x plus 1 in place of a u, and I'd get u squared minus 9u plus 20 equals 0. Very nice, we can factor this one. There are the rules, a u in place of 3x plus 1, a u squared can become 3, or 3x plus 1 squared can become the u squared, and they'll trade places at the end of this problem. So factor u minus 4, u minus 5, solve u equals 4, u equals 5. And now let's do the sub back in. u is 3x plus 1, so subbing back in leaves us with these linear equations, which we'll want to continue to solve. That's going to take this to x equals 1, and our equation over here to x equals 4 over 3, 4 thirds. And let's take a look at the graph. We see our x-intercepts at 1 and that 4 thirds. Really nice.